they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear them. Hi, uh, my name is Enrique, and you're tuning in to Talk of the Town. Today we're here with... I see Slug, what's going on? All right, awesome. So uh, we like to start off with a little thing called rapid fire questions here. A nice little icebreaker. So I'll just ask you these questions and then you'll, you'll give me the answer. Mm -hmm. All right, but Let's do it. so three things you'll take with you on an island. AirPods. Um, uh, gloves and pads. Okay. All right, <laughs> AirPods, gloves and pads, no phone. <laughs> oh wait, but I said I need some for my AirPods. Yeah, I guess so, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about what's your favorite food? Uh, sushi. Sushi. Okay. What's your favorite album? Or uh, maybe favorite album right now? Oh, Cash Cobain. Too slizzy, too sexy. Ooh, okay, good yeah. pick. So, okay, what? You, uh, on top of that, what's your favorite song right now? Uh, like me by Siggy Black. Shout okay. Out to Siggy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, fact. Shout out to Siggy. He actually did the Talk of the Town theme song. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. Shit, so anytime, that. like in the beginning of this, people are here. What you gonna do with me now? I'm still talking oh, the town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> shout out to oh, Siggy Black. Shit, I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. Shout <laughs> yeah, out to man. Um, what's the last movie you saw? Oh, I'm in the movies every two seconds. Uh, so I was just watching The Departed today. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually never seen that movie in really? its entirety. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I hear it's I great. Just, though. I rewatched it. You know, I'm watching a lot of mom movies right now. So, I mean, a few days ago, I just watched Black Mass for the first time. Oh wow! I don't that's know how one. that movie went under the radar. That's yeah. like easily one of the best crime movies of all time, and that just flew under everybody's radar. Yeah, it, John, Johnny Depp did a yeah, great job. Yeah, he killed that. You saw that movie? Yeah. Oh my god, he did a great bro! What a job, performance! Bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what is one <laughs> artist you want to work with that you haven't yet? Um. I mean, I like say Cash and Chow are like really running shit right now. I think that they're just bringing something back like that hasn't been in rap like since like the mid 2000s. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah. So I would say I would say probably them right now. You know? Yeah. yeah. That they have a very like vibrant, yeah. bouncy energy. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. Like you, you know a Cash Cobain song when you hear it. Yeah. Which I feel like you can only say about like so many people. Exactly. I feel like everything in New York with drill and everything, everything sounds the fucking same, bro. So that's why I fucking love I mean besides Siggy, mm -hmm. you know, Siggy's actually putting good songwriting, good hooks together. Everything else is like, I'm like no, no, I'm gonna, huh. yeah. I'm gonna, no. like I don't understand how people can listen to that shit all day, you know. Same with Chow, but I wouldn't even consider, you know, Cash and Chow Joe rappers. They they got yeah. their own genre of music right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like they were uh, they're really important in helping bring that Jersey club oh, sound in New York too. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and they're from like Long Island, I think. Right? I don't want to sound stupid, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, somebody <laughs> fact check us in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I don't know. I kind of it kind of plays into the last one, but outside of Cash and Chow, then mm -hmm. who who is your dream feature? Uh, dream feature. I don't want to sound generic and sound like Drake, but when I say Drake, I mean I I really think he's like a fucking super talented artist. I mean, yeah. there, there's a reason why he's as big as he is. But shit. I, w I would say something like Jada Kiss, man. Ooh. I think he's like easily like the best lyricist of all time. But wow. I mean, it takes shit. I would need to, you need to give me some time to start, you know, getting up there <laughs> with him. You know, uh, I wouldn't sound right on the track with him as of right now. So yeah, yeah. Holy shit, no, that's a great one. I feel yeah. like I, I honestly, I never would have guessed you to say that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Drake is a really common answer because yeah, he's, he's the boy. <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't just do it just because it's like it would be a huge song. Like, I really think Drake is just like it. Just it just goes to show why he's that big. You know, like if you yeah. go back and listen to like. Nothing was the same. Like that, his attitude he had on that whole album is just like nothing on anything else. You know, you'll get mixes and you know a bunch of different moods, but he had this like demeanor the whole fucking album. Like, it's like it's like he really wanted his respect, and I feel like he got it with yeah. that album. I'm not saying he didn't get it with Take Care, but that <laughs> like fucking solidified it. You know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I feel yeah. like especially since then, it's just been like a string of Drake hit after oh, hit. Yeah, yeah. Even if like people are a little. Like whatever their own opinions are, like yeah. CLB, for example. I know yeah. a lot of people were like divided I, I, on. I loved. It. I thought that was the best album since like probably nothing was the same. Or oh wow, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. how'd you feel about honestly? Never mind. I lo I love that album, bro. Yeah. I don't understand how people can hate on it. people. Get you know people get pissed off when people you know when artists start changing, you know. I mean, like, how much of the same, like, kind of Drake... I mean, I could listen to it all day, but, like, Drake's at that level. Like, if I was him, I would try to be doing, like, a bunch of crazy shit, too. And it's not like it was fucking bad. I listen to that album almost every day, you know? Mm -hmm. That was just different. You know, like, what, what rap artists, you know, are making house, you know, club shit like that? Nobody, you know? Yeah, that really, like, I feel like that made him go from just, like... You know, yeah, he's Drake. Everyone around the world is going to listen to him, but that especially yeah. opened up the whole thing. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so Dream Feature. What is one song of yours you wish got more love? Have fun. Have fun? Have fun. I, I really think, uh, you know, I, there's, so, there's a bunch of songs, a bunch of unreleased songs, but uh, have fun. I just feel like the songwriting, the hook, and I mean, it's just everything was there, you know? The, the video was great, too. I, at the time, we really didn't know what we were doing. And to be honest, you know, that song came out after I really... I was, you know, I was thinking about stopping stop making music, you know? Like, oh, wow. Music wasn't my first, first thing. At first, I didn't take it too serious. Mm -hmm. Then um, then we had the song with Tekka blow, uh, blowing up. And then there was, like, this, you know, five, six-month period where I really couldn't, like, make a good solo song. And a lot of people were like, oh, this dude's just, you know, doing features, and that's where he's getting all his, you know, mm -hmm. his revenue from. But, uh, yeah, at the time, I was recording in, you know, my manager's basement, and uh, I had this one other studio I went to, and... It's like nothing was coming out, Will, you know? And, and yep. I was talking to my manager, Ty, and he was telling me, oh, you know, I think, you you know, these songs are good songs. Maybe you just have to try another studio. And we tried another studio, and it still would come out like shit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just like, I, I really got this one last good song, and it was half fun at the time. And I recorded that and wrote it when I was like 13. And... Um, and I, I did it at this other studio, and it just, it just sounded like shit. And Ty was like, you know what? Before you just completely say fuck it, mm -hmm. try this one studio. We, we ended up going to Penthouse. He was like, yo, I got this one engineer I know. Uh, let me just hook you up. If, if this doesn't work, then, you know, just focus on sports and whatever you want to do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I, I gave it a try. I went in there, and, you know, I, uh, I did have fun in a few other songs, and it, it, I thought it sounded fucking amazing. So, I mean, long story short, that song came out, like, when I was like 15, 16, so almost three years it took for that song to come out. Wow. Yeah, so talk about development hell, but um, <laughs> yeah, that song took fucking forever. And uh, yeah, I just knew, like, I was like, I feel like I, the songwriting, the hook behind this is just so well. And once I made that, I was like, you know what, it, sometimes it really could be the engineer stuff. There's a lot of yeah. people out here making music out here. And, it's like you know where they're trying to go, and it just sounds like shit because they don't have the right equipment or right engineer. So, you know, if you ever doubt yourself, just make sure you're recording at the right place. And if it doesn't come come out good at that point, then maybe you can say fuck it <laughs> uh, at that point, you know? But uh, yeah, yeah, just make sure you get a good engineer because that was really what was going to be the breaking point of me, you know, keep keep going or uh, stopping at that time. Yeah. Yeah, man, engineers are so important to yeah. the process because mm -hmm. I mean, like, they're right there directly recording you, but they can also give you that like that great feedback because they're over there working with the system as well. Yeah. And then there's the experience they pull from working with so many other people. Exactly. Like, I was at a off record not too long ago, and one of my boys was working with Matt Marvin. Okay. Shout out Matt Marvin. Um, he, my boy, was laying down the track and just going, and as like he was rapping, Matt was taking the hook and just placing it over and over again, yeah. already structuring it so he could just focus on the verses. Yeah. So. Yeah, it makes engineers. A huge oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, it makes a huge difference. I'm just saying, like, and I and I realized that you know, because when I went to this other studio, I was recording in Ty's basement for a while. Then I went to this other studio, and I was like, if anything, this sounds worse than me being in your basement. You know, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. say the engineer's name, but it was just like I'm making all these songs, spending all this money. Like, it's either I'm not a good artist, or like, bro, I don't know what the fuck I got to do. There's two places I went to, and it's just not working out. But then once I went to Penthouse, and Ty showed me this other engineer, it's, you know. Dude has his mouth shut the whole time, just, you know, putting everything, like, a line, and, like, not saying anything, just bow, 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 here, 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 bro. We banged out fucking a four-minute song, and I probably wrote, I recorded that song in, like, probably less than 20 minutes, and that's a four-minute song, bro. Holy shit. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the other place, bro, you know, I, the fucking engineer was talking to me about WWE shit. I don't even watch fucking WWE, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why. <laughs> Booking a session and just having your engineer like fucking oh talk to God, you is it crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it was bad, but um, yeah, man, it just it, it makes a big difference when you when you start getting with good people, and that doesn't just go for engineer. I mean, that's a huge part of it, but then there comes marketing, and uh, there's so many aspects to music, you know, and it, you just yeah. really got to surround yourself with the right people, especially in an industry like this where everybody's a piece of shit pretty much, bro. Like, really. And I mean that, bro. Like, 95% of the people you meet uh, in the music industry are just gonna try to fuck you over. And I don't mm -hmm. mean, like, they'll just, like, oh, they're just not gonna mess with you and leave you alone. Like, they'll go out, out their way to just, like, fuck you over for no reason. That really goes for almost everybody. Besides Siggy. Shout out to Siggy. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. Shout out to Siggy. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the engineers because they know what the fuck they're yeah, 100%, doing. 100%, man. Yo, trust your engineer most of the time. Exactly. I mean, Except I, when he's talking to you about wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, it means it's time to go, right? Yeah. And stream, stream have fun. Yeah, <laughs> Run stream that shit have up. Fun, bro. That shit, I still think that, that has potential to blow up one day. So. 
Yeah. Um, okay. So we got over that. What uh, what show are you currently watching? Oh, I just finished. Uh, shit, man, that's a good question. I mean, let me let me just say I am with film, bro. I could talk about film all day because that's okay. like my main interest. Besides oh, wow. sports and everything, and you know, I do MMA too. Eventually, I want to you know turn pro. Um, but uh, not. I don't want to get too far off subject. But film is like I want to become a film director eventually. So that was my okay. main focus. Um, it's what I'm gonna be studying in college next year. But uh, oh wow. Yeah, so uh, I just finished watching Fowder. Sorry, I'm going way off time. No, you're good. But yeah, I've, you ever seen Fowder? Fowder? Is it a TV show? Yeah, yeah, it's on Netflix. It's about like the Israeli secret intelligence, but it's fucking wild. Because the oh, main shit. guy is, uh, well, he directs it. He's the main character in it. Um, and, and it's really based on a lot of his story. So I think they wrote the first three seasons based around what he went through. Mm -hmm. Season four, I mean, they, season four is the best season, but it's like, all right, you could tell some of this shit, like, you know, it probably didn't. Maybe it did. I mean, I, I, for, I only saw that when season three came out and it was like, yeah, he, he's been through most of this. Like, all those yeah. people you see died, really died in his life. Sheesh. So, yeah, go watch Fowda. But my top three, I mean, I'm wearing a Peaky Blinders shirt right now. So that's, <laughs> that's my favorite show. The Boys... I don't know if oh you yeah, the boys great a show. Phenomenal show. Great bro. fucking show. Yeah, it's crazy because I saw that first episode and I fucking um, I hated it at first. I was like, "What the really? fuck am I watching?" You know, and I'm a big comic book fan. Um, I actually have the first comic book of the boys I read and I, I didn't like it. But um, yeah, that's a show you got to keep watching, bro. Absolutely. That and then Gangs of London. Oh, Gangs of okay. London is a phenomenal show. There's a few other ones. I mean, Daredevil, Punisher, Nikki Jam, but. Uh, those are like my top three, four right there, yeah. Okay. And last one. What is one lesson you've learned in the industry so far? Don't trust anybody, bro. Mm. I really mean that, bro. I mean, I'm not going to get too specific, bro, but like, if I was to tell anybody just starting out that really, you know, promotion is a huge part and you got to work with some shitty people, but just make sure you always have contracts with everything, man. That's that's huge, man. If you don't have contracts or nothing that you could use in court, because most of the time you're going to end up going to fucking court. Mm. Or, or they're going to try to fuck you over, and they most likely won't if you have an agreement. And if, they, and if they do, then at least you have something to go back on and try to get something back out of it. But uh, yeah, bro, I mean, just don't trust anybody, bro. Nobody's really here to make friends. Everybody's here to just try to make money and, you know, put on for themselves. So Yeah. Yeah. Damn, dropping game. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, but so that concludes rapid fire questions. Let's uh let's get into it. Rapid fire. That shit's like for real. It's all right though. <laughs> um, okay. So you grew up in Queens, born mm -hmm. and raised in Queens, actually. I yeah. feel like that's a really, really big thing to note. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people um, in different parts of the industry that are like doing really big things yeah. aren't like or rather doing big things in New York aren't from New York. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that born and raised uh, tag really makes a difference. So, uh, what part of Queens are you from? Uh, originally Astoria, so like actually like right oh, wow. down the fucking block. Bro. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I forgot the name of the way. towers, but uh, yeah, I was there for a little while, and then mm -hmm. uh, now I moved to Flushing, and now I'm kind of bouncing around. Uh, you know, I stayed in uh, Connecticut for a little when I went to prep school out there. Okay. And then uh, I went to you know school in Jersey for a little while. I didn't stay out there, so I was actually driving back from Queens and Jersey every day. But, Holy shit! Yeah, it was, it's worth it. It's a good school, you know, Don Bosco Prep. Uh, okay. Yeah, I played football, hockey, and baseball out there, so... Yeah, Sheesh. Yeah. So, you mentioned earlier that you played MMA and football as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, played MMA. You partook <laughs> in MMA. Fought, yeah. yeah, yeah, fought in MMA. There we go. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Because <laughs> no, I'm a baseball guy, so, like, for yeah, me, it's, yeah, me always too, like, yeah. it's always play. But, um, so, music and sports, how does that come about? Which one came first, actually? Oh, sports. It's always okay. been sports from the beginning, you know. Uh, you know, me and my manager, ever since we were super young, I mean, he was the fucking man in ball, you know, he's... Going to LIU next mm -hmm. year, so Division One ball player. I'm going to LIU for football next year, but um, yeah, yeah. With me, it's always been uh, football, hockey, and baseball. Those are my three sports since I was super young. I played lacrosse for a little, but uh, stopped doing that. But yeah, I mean, it's it, it worked out well because you know after after football season, you would jump into hockey. After hockey, it would be uh, baseball. And I love being active, man. I was never somebody who just sits at the house and loved to hang out. You know, I love just work and work and working. So. Uh, yeah, it was always my dream to, you know, my main goal since I was young was just to make sure my my uh, parents don't got to pay for my tuition for college and I go down on a scholarship. So that was my goal. If I go pro after that, then fuck it, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it was sports all the time. And then music kind of just happened out of nowhere, bro. It was actually, uh, 
you know, my, my man at Italia started producing for a while and he played a few beats for me while he had all his recording equipment in his basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I just started. I, I came out with like a bullshit freestyle. You know, it was like, it was horrible. Bro. I don't even, I'm pretty sure I said some gay shit here and there, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. But yeah, so that, uh, that file eventually got out to, to a bunch of people that we knew. And uh, they were like, yo, make this a real song. Like, it actually doesn't sound bad. So I went back in there, I made it a real song. And there was another artist in the area that was hot at the time, and we got him on it. And, and it was cool. It was just supposed to be like a fuck around song. But yeah. that, I wasn't planning on making a music career. You know, I was over here just focusing on sports. But yeah, I mean, besides that, it never really interfered too much. You know, mm -hmm. people always think, you know, a lot of, I get a lot of questions like, how do you do sports? And, you know, you play three, four, I mean, four sports now. And, uh, and you're still able to do all these video shoots and, uh, you know, perform here and there and keep up with music and promotion. Like, how do you do it? it to be honest, it doesn't really interfere, you know, if you're, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's annoying, you know, maybe, but I can't sit there and just focus all day on music and making TikToks, but uh, I don't really need that much time when I'm on the phone, you know, in between practices or driving to school and back, you know, I'm on the phone with him all day, you know, mm -hmm. like, what could we do next? You know, what's the next big thing with promotion? So... Yeah, all it, music isn't like fucking crazy. I mean, it's a lot, it's stressful, but it's not like super super time consuming, you know. Yeah. So I never really interfered too much, but I mean, uh, yeah, you know, I'm always busy, and I like I like being busy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no, I could imagine because I mean, like, I grew up, I played baseball and football and basketball, but more so right. on the street than like organi yeah. uh, organizationally. So Yankees fan? No, nah, I'm a Mets fan, bro. Okay, okay. I like yeah. the Mets, so I'm not a Mets yeah. hater. It's not like hockey, you know. I'm a Rangers <laughs> fan only, but uh. Yeah, I like, I like both teams, yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, I could see, or definitely I can understand, like, all the questions. Because I remember how time-consuming playing sports was, just baseball. Like, oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah bro, yeah. practice, game. Um, yeah. That's not even including, like, conditioning and exercises yeah, exactly, as well. Exactly. If you're, like, really, like, yeah. really, really trying to yeah, get at that 100%. level. So, kudos. I mean, it sounds like you got a really great work ethic, bro. Yeah, especially. Thank you, man. Yeah, no, especially considering what your D1 football you said, right? Yeah, yeah. That's not easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just graduated, so now we're playing uh, LIU next year. We started practicing already, so uh, yeah, we look good this year. I'm excited. Okay, so um, let's take it back to the beginning of the music bit. Mm -hmm. So when, when exactly, how old were you when, when you and Ty laid down that track? Well, it's my freshman. 12, 13. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when did you release like your first? Uh, you said twelve, thirteen, right? Yeah, right around that time. Yeah. Okay. What was the response like? People liked it. I mean, but it wasn't like people had any expectations. You know, okay. it was kind of like, oh, this this is a kid who's playing football, varsity as a freshman, and he's he's doing music now. Oh, why not listen to it? It, it, mm -hmm. it was a decent song. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what came out first. Was it drama or a bad little thing? It was one of those two songs. But, yeah, I think uh, it was drama. Yeah. <laughs> on, not that I'm yeah, yeah, going to tell you, but yeah, on Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> on Spotify, drama's first. Yeah, and Ty, Ty's name on there. Ty was a man with ball everybody knows from sports. So that's when people started, you know, catching on to it. And then yeah. uh, over time, you know, it just it started getting bigger and bigger. And I still didn't take it seriously until I saw a few thousand coming in. <laughs> okay. So what was it like, like, starting to take it seriously? You know, like, what was... What was the moment that made you feel like, oh shit, maybe I should actually like really start working yeah. at this thing more? Um, well, I'll tell you one thing about the song with Lil Tecca that definitely brought it in that direction was um, it, we, I, even even at the time when we dropped the song with Lil Tecca, I wouldn't consider you know us taking it seriously because even at that time I didn't drop a song that didn't have a feature on it, so I wouldn't say it was just you know for fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing where I saw that I kind of liked the direction it was going in is. Is um, well, people knew uh, people I knew from school and from Queens, they knew tech, and you know, we got in touch and eventually got the hook back from him. But I was like, Ty, like, this this song is actual hit, bro. Like, this this sounds really good. Like, this is some mainstream shit. Let's get one more person who's big on it. Like, come out the fucking blue and just like surprise everybody. Mm -hmm. This is like a few months after Luga Cash Drops Make 10, which is like, you know, the shit in New York. Everybody yeah. everybody in my school is posting Luga Cash this, Luga Cash that. And um, sure enough, like like a few days after we got the hook, we see Luga Cash at uh, Holy Cross, which oh, wow. is, uh, I think we were, I don't know if we, yeah, we were in high school at the time. Yes, yeah, so we were freshmen and, um, and uh, and they had a game and we were just showing and I was like, yo, this is before Ty went to crosses. He's, I'm not gonna, I'm going too off topic, but yeah. <laughs> so we were at the game and uh, there was a bunch of people there. Who uh, who else was there, bro? 
It was uh, Luga Cash. It was it was some big people there. What's his name? Who's in the NBA right now, bro? Cole Anthony. Yeah, yeah. So he was oh, there. Wow. It was a bunch of big people, and I was like, um, bro, let's just introduce ourselves. Like, we got nothing to lose, bro. We're fucking 13 years old. What's the worst that could happen? So Luga Cash's people were fucking. They were really cool, and uh, and Ty, you know, talked his way into you know agreeing with us to try to get a feature for a super low price, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Which I, at the time for us was like fucking, that was not low at all. Right? Yeah. Like, it was like, I forgot how much it was. I'm not going to say anything, but <laughs> it wasn't that bad looking back on it. But at that time, we were like, whoa, bro, how are we going to come up with this money? So it was a snowstorm that happened. Like, uh, it was actually going on at, during the game. I'm and sure. we were like, bro, let's fucking shovel everybody's house and get as much money as we can. <laughs> so, we were, so we got a few hundred from that. We're just hustling, hustling. He's over here selling his shoes. I'm over here selling my shoes, like doing whatever the fuck we can to get this feature because we knew that shit would blow up. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, we got him on the song. And I, man, looking back on it, if I had that track right now, I, I would have known what to, what to do with it. I mean, it still did great, it, you know, over like tens of millions of streams. But man, if we if we were if we had the knowledge we did now back then, uh, mm -hmm. we would we would have fucking took that song to a whole nother level. So yeah, so after that, it, it, the song actually did horrible in the beginning, you know, because we didn't have him promoted, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Yeah. And um, but I knew that Tekka would blow up. I knew it would be a good song. So eventually it caught on. And then once I saw, you know, the numbers and everything, and I was like, bro, why don't we try doing this for real? And so I was like, all right, man, but you can't keep doing this feature, so you got to make an actual fucking song, you know. So that's uh, that's when I went into that phase, you know, where I, I felt like I couldn't do nothing after a while, but then I. Uh, have fun really, really brought me back, and that's when I realized, you know, I, I got a talent in just songwriting and coming up with these hooks, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, honestly, you've got some crazy features. Yeah. I mean, we'll bring things a little more recent. Mm -hmm. uh, you just dropped the track with Ron Suno yeah, today. Yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did that uh, come about? Uh, shit. So uh, we were actually in uh, Ty's basement just talking. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie, I was, this, at this time I was away at prep school mm -hmm. in uh, Connecticut, so I didn't know what the fuck was going on in New York, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm over here, they're over here playing fucking country, I hated it out there. Uh -huh. But I come back and, bro, when I came back, it was like all this sample drill. And I remember before I left, the only people, the only person who was doing sample drill was like Siggy at the time. So I'm like, whoa, wow. Siggy must be fucking huge now. I mean, they're like, yeah, Siggy's big, but bro, this guy's like K Flock and all these guys. And, Ron Suno's like the shit now too. I mean, Ron Suno's been hot for a minute, but like, it was just like all over the place. They were like, yo, let's make a Joe song. And I was like, all right. I made a bunch of, I don't know, not really drill. I never fell in love with the, the drill type of wave, but I love Jersey drill. You know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't consider that the same genre, but uh, yeah, and I had a bunch of these Jersey songs and, um, and it was actually, that song, Fuck With You, was a completely different song. I had a different verse. The only thing was that was uh, in, in the version that it is now is the hook. And I, I thought it was oh, wow. the worst song I had coming out that session where I did all those Jersey songs. Oh, shit. <laughs> and so I was like, no, bro, like, this is a hit, you know? And, uh, and I was like, all right, you know, if that's what you think, let's just fucking put it out. He's like, no, 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 we're going to follow up with this. So he started reaching out to people. He, uh, you know, ties cool with Bo. And uh, that's when eventually, you know, we got Ron Tuna on it. Eventually, it, I'm not going to go into the specifics, but it was supposed to be a bunch of people on that song. Oh, that wow. we have on that song. Uh, I still got to figure out what to... What to do with maybe we drop it as a remix, but yeah, yeah, there's a lot more people on that song. Oh sure. It's uh right now we only put out the I'm not gonna get into specifics, but Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's how that so, song came about. So some possible remixes slash yeah, verses you're trying to figure out what to do with. hundred percent, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I mean I think it's a really good song. I like the Rihanna sample. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I could be wrong, but I've never heard anybody sample man down before. I thought, no, I thought yeah. that was a really good, really yeah, good choice. I, I did too. I mean, shout out to Denzel. He's, uh, he's been fucking killing it. You know, he doesn't just take the sample and, you know, I, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of sampling shit either, but he mm -hmm. makes it sound like he's sampling stuff, but makes it sound original at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, some people just leave the whole fucking sample loop it and don't add any effects to it. This guy completely, you know, re-renders the beat. And, you know, if you ever catch the Opta song over with Shai K and Siggy, uh, yeah. What he did with that beat was sick, bro. I like that was just. I mean, I don't know if whether he pitched or whatever the fuck he did, but that came out great, bro. Yeah. So shout out to Denzel. Yeah, I was listening to the catch the to, to the catcher op pack because you dropped another song on there yeah, too, Chico. Chico. Yeah. I actually didn't even know that until like because I remember seeing catcher op drop. Yeah. And I remember it being big because I think Respective did that video too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Respective. Shout out to Respective. <laughs> um, right there. 
What's it called? But yeah, no, I had no clue that Chico dropped. And honestly, like, I really fucking like it. Yeah, thank you. Man. It is yeah, a really I, good song, bro. Like, I think you're really good at um, at finding the melodies that go right with the beat. Yeah. And, like, flowing on them really good, too. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, you definitely have a lot of, um, like, bar, like, bars sections. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's also, like, a fair amount of your lines that are, like, melodic as well. Like, yeah, writing the beat in a way. And I feel like it works really well with the whole, like, the whole, like, the contrast between the deep voice and, like, the, the melodies. Yeah. Yeah, it, thank bro. you, man. Yeah, you know, I try, I want everything to sound like, you know, just fucking rapping. Everything with Joe now is just rap, rap, rap. You know, I, if I, I mean, I have, I don't think I really rapped on a drill beat yet, but if I was, mm. excuse me, <laughs> if I was, you know, I would make sure it has a catchy fucking hook on it, bro. And mm -hmm. some, some shit is just this rap, rap, rap. So I try to do my best with the hooks and songwriting and, uh, yeah, yeah. I take it seriously. It's not just going to be rap, 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 talk about dead people all day, you know? Yeah, I, I for real. that shit, bro. Nah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, like, a lot of drill songs don't really have that structure, too, mm -hmm. you know? Like, the hook, qu oh, chorus and hook are the same thing. The hook... Yeah verse mm, yeah. hook or even verse hook verse and so on and so forth mm. a lot of it is just like kind of just goes in one way yeah you know what i mean yeah and yours is your stuff is really different because it's also like it's also not that short mm -hmm. you know like your songs are like decent length and i feel like that's something that doesn't really happen a lot nowadays like yeah. you'll see somebody drop like a two and a half minute song three minute song maybe but a lot of songs are like just barely hitting that two minute yeah, mark it's crazy. if not like five or bro, six they put out snippets over. and then the next thing you know the fucking full song is out. i'm like bro i already heard this whole shit you know what i mean <laughs> nah yeah. no that's a fact like you know it's like the snippet is the song yeah it's yeah, pretty crazy much, right? yeah i know <laughs> um what's it called so you have a lot of singles mm -hmm. out I was going through your Spotify not too long ago, and it's like a lot of singles. Uh, there's the, the two track uh, quote unquote EP yeah. uh, for um, for Catch It Up. Yeah. But um, you had an EP out prior, right? Yeah, it was like a album. It was at a time where, you know, like I said earlier, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, bro. Yeah. It's kind of like recording in, you know, my manager's basement, but uh, yeah, yeah, it trapped you. That's yeah, right. trapped yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I was at a time where I wasn't taking shit too serious. I kind of just wanted to be funny, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, Trapped is a funny name, but I'm kind of glad we got that off, you know. Because yeah. that just doesn't. I mean, you know, there's a few songs on there that still have really good song structure on it. Like, Cut Her Off is a good song, you know. The the hook on that song, I feel like, is it's a few songs on there, but I just still it doesn't match, you know, the artist I'm trying to be now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get that because brand identity, I feel like, is a really like really a big thing that not a lot of rappers really bother to care about you know yeah and i feel like it just goes to show like that you do care about your work because like you're saying you know like it's not representative of the the, the artist that you are now yeah exactly so like it doesn't make sense for that kind of thing to continue to like be up there yeah if it's not like you know it's not really your thing exactly yeah so that's really cool though no, i was wondering because like, like i was telling you earlier i was was looking i didn't see it so i was like yeah, yeah, <laughs> did, yeah like, we not to make sure we got that off yeah, yeah i'm glad though <laughs> what i'm uh What's it called? Do you ever like see yourself taking some of those songs and like just reworking them? A hundred percent, man. There's uh there's so many songs I recorded at that time where I was, you know, working with this engineer and and I was telling myself, I'm like, bro, I I, I could record this on my phone and it, it it'll speak back to me and tell me it's a good fucking song. Mm -hmm. I could I could see where I'm going and I play it for other people and uh and they could see where I'm going. It's just a matter of if my vocals sound like shit or not. There's so many songs I want to go back and revisit, but at the same time, it's like I'm rec I'm writing so so much, and uh, you know I'm so focused on all the stuff I'm doing now. But if I really go back and rework some of those other songs, I think I could have a few hits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I'm um I mean, do you I, you said you like Jersey Drill a lot? Do you have like a preference for a specific genre, or is it just like any kind of like hip hop? I listen to pop all day, bro. Oh, word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, nah. I mean, right now, shit. The last. Uh, Besides Siggy Black, I love Cash Cobain and Chow, um, Drake. Uh, it just, so new music isn't really doing it for me, bro, especially in New York, man. It's just like, I don't understand how people could, they don't get fed up with the same fucking music all day. The same, same shit, you know? That's why I kind of like, you know, I go back and listen to like the pop that was hot when I was, you know, growing up around like, you know, middle school or whatever. That shit. That was good songwriting, you know. That was good stuff right there. So I'd rather listen to that than him and huh, him and huh, him and huh, him and huh. And it's you know the lyrics are bullshit too. There's nothing to fucking call back from them. Maybe they're a little catchy, but I don't know, bro. Do you ever like is pop a genre you see yourself stepping into no, eventually? Man, if I always tell Ty if I if 
I had a fucking voice, I would have never became a rapper. Bro. Really? I would have never did rapping. But yeah, I'd much rather make pop music. Or the, I mean, I feel like I make a... I don't want to say that because I kind of I kind of like some of the songs I made when it comes to rap. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd much rather... I, I'm more invested in pop than uh, okay. rap, yeah. Who are, some, uh, who are some of the pop acts that you were listening to back from? Back from oh, like when shit. you were in high school and such, or middle school? Uh, Amy Winehouse, oh, wow. rest in peace. Yeah, I mean, she, she's... There's never be anything like her. I thought that she was like ahead of her time and brought back some from the past that uh, was never there, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy Winehouse, uh, Lady Gaga, I listened to all day. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of a few more of the big uh, pop artists. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a few songs I have that are kind of like on the bridge of like more of like R&B slash, slash pop. Uh, you know, me and Jamie Dolan fucking just did a oh, sure. short film that... Uh, I can't wait for you guys to see. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, me and him directed it. I wrote it. Oh wow! Uh, oh shit! That's great. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a you know a 10, 11 minute film. Uh, okay. You have a few uh, cool people in there. Jojo Scarlota's in there. So yeah, it, it's it's gonna be good. I'm just uh, waiting for the right time to drop that. But that song isn't a hip hop song. That's uh, shit. Uh, more of like an R and B pop. Okay. Yeah, I fucking love that song. I can't wait to get that out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. Holy shit, that's crazy. Shout yeah. out Jamie Dolan. Yeah, shout actually. out to Jamie. He's the fucking man. He's uh absolutely love that guy. You know, he's uh so humble. He was one of the only guys I met, like I said, that that I could you know I could talk to all day and and really trust. He's just a good guy, you know. Because at the level he's had, he actually you know talking about Jamie, he reached out to me and. And I was just shocked because I was like, mm -hmm. I saw the stuff that he was doing. I'm like, wow, this guy is, you know, yeah. no business really talking to somebody, you know, at the level I'm at. He, you know, he's over here working with, uh, shit, uh, Bella Hadid or whatever, one of the fucking models. Um, yeah. <laughs> Offset, and he's producing these, like, fucking $100,000 videos, you know? Yeah, man. I'm like, you know, and he was just like, nah, I just, I, I saw the... The vision you got and all this stuff, and you sound a lot different than most of the other people in New York. So yeah, I mean, hearing that from a guy like him is is awesome. So then he was like, "Bro, let's fucking let's get together and and make something happen," you know. So we mm -hmm. went out to eat. I uh, wrote up this script for the short film I had, and he really liked that. You know, he he wasn't like, uh, "Oh man, this guy's just trying to do a regular fucking music video with me." But no, I made sure. You know, I always had this concept of doing like a short film slash video. Okay. And uh, right when I right when I got in touch with him, I was like, he's the perfect guy to help me get it done, you know. Definitely. So uh, yeah, shout out to Jamie Dolan, man. I, I can't wait to get that out. Yeah. It's wow. Gonna be awesome. Yeah. Holy shit! No, that's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. we um we interviewed him not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw him on, he's yeah. a great guy, amazing conversationalist. Yeah. It honestly, our interview didn't even feel like that. It just felt like a, yeah, like I was yeah. just sitting down yeah, getting exactly. to know him. No, he's, 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 he's dope, man. He's, yeah, super uh, humble, and, and he's like he's such a producer because he knows exactly where to place people, mm -hmm. and he's looking like where to put people on next. Yeah. So I feel like we need a lot more of that in the industry. Yeah, Somebody yeah, like I mean, him who's yeah, like yeah. genuine. Exactly, you know? exactly. I I agree with you 100. percent Yeah. Um. What's it called? So getting back on the topic of singles and such, do you like? Is there a an icy slug project like not maybe like not at least like in the near future but somewhere along the line? Yeah, I mean, uh, shit. I, right now, I have like probably over a hundred unreleased. Oh um, shit! <laughs> I could I could easily narrow it down to a good fifteen songs right now, but I just don't feel like I'm at that level to put it out and feel good about you know promoting it. I just don't think I'm at that level yet, but de it'll definitely come a time. I mean, I, w I have a whole concept behind it and I just know which way I would want to push it, but uh, just not there yet. You know, I'm waiting for one of these singles to get a little bigger and you know start catching on a little more, yeah. Yeah, I get that. Do you, um, uh, is, is it something you, th would it be like a hip hop album or would it just be like I would, I would love diverse? To, I would love for it to be uh, just a mix of a whole bunch of stuff, man. Like there is a, uh, I have, uh, you know, I'm just all over the place, man. When it comes to Jersey, I feel like I got a good, bunch of good Jersey songs. When it comes mm -hmm. to regular, you know, like a Travis Scott type hip hop song, yeah, I have that, and it sound all of them sound good, bro. I mean, even like a, you know, I just uh, finished a few songs where, um, you know, I kind of had like that Cardi slash Destroy Lonely type vibe, and uh, and I was taking a lot of inspiration from this guy uh, called Highway. If you never heard of him, but uh, Highway. Yeah, not, he's, not he's sure dope. He's going to get up there, too. But, um, yeah, and I thought that stuff sounded amazing, too. So I have all these genres, and, you know, I would love to just throw it on one album so people could realize, you know, I'm not, like, just a one-dimensional artist. You know, I could really write songs for any any type of genre and throw a little bit of pop and R&B on there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would definitely. I would tune into an icy slug pop album. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. appreciate Absolutely, that. Absolutely, bro. I think thanks. I think you got a hell of a pun. Yeah, thanks. So man. I'd really, especially like honestly, I'd never would have taken you for somebody who listens to Lady Gaga. Really? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, I not know, in the fucking I know. world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd much rather listen to that than. Uh, I mean, there's still good hip hop. I mean, like I could listen to guys like Siggy all day, Chow all day, but uh, yeah, I, probably, I just songwriting and pop is just fucking flawless, you know. Yeah, especially because like it's it's written with that intention of yeah. it being um, you more universal, you yeah, know, like exactly. accepting to a wider audience. Yeah. Because like I mean, there are definitely hip hop tracks that I feel like do make that crossover, oh, 100%, and it's yeah. like everybody can like it, but not every hip hop track is like that. Yeah, you know yeah, exactly. But I feel like every pop song is like that. Yeah. So yeah, Icy Slug uh, <laughs> pop album, not bad. I think right? that's a uh, something day. to look out for in yeah, the future. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Okay. Um, so we were talking a little bit off camera, mm -hmm. and you were talking about how you were something of like, you were a little viral when you were younger, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we had a few, uh, few moments. Okay, uh, All right, break them down for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, whether it was just, you know, like a big hit or in football or, you know, tie fucking crossing somebody up, you know, we were always on the scene about, I mean, it was mainly relating to sports. One thing that gave us a really big push and like started making a lot of people pay attention, at least where I was from, was, uh, shit, uh, you know, it's it's not like a secret, but it was, you know, on the news when I got stabbed in the head with a machete when I was like, uh, I want to say 13, 14 years old. Yo, <laughs> nah, Crazy, <hold> right? <laughs> nah, because <laughs> you said that like it was like incredibly casual, you know, like yeah, I, mean, I just, I, I walked into a machete or some shit. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, um, uh, that's, cr that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're here. God bless, yeah, you know? Right? Yeah, thank God. But, um. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, shit, I'll, I might as well tell the whole story. You know, I think it's good I tell the whole story because most people only hear, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that I just got stabbed in the head. And most yeah. people are like, how the fuck did that happen? And they don't really know. So, I mean, I guess uh, one day I was on, on my way to school at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, me and my, my mom was driving me to school and this one person kept cutting us off. And... Uh, my, my mom's a little high head Puerto Rican moms, you know? And, uh, <laughs> Facts. I know about the Puerto Rican moms. <laughs> I, I got one myself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this lady kept cutting us off, and, you know, they start arguing out the window. And uh, we get to a light, and uh, this person gets out the car. You know, nothing in their hand at first. My mom gets out the car, and, uh, you know, they start fighting or whatever. Uh, I'm going to give a... Uh, I get out the car on my side, yeah. and uh, pretty much I pull my mom off, and uh, I tell everybody to get back to their cars, and this person starts fucking screaming. Uh, let me say it's a lady, because if it was a fucking guy, I probably I would have beat the shit out of him. Yeah. You know? So it was, and my mom was taking care of it. Let me stop. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so I, I pull my mom off, I tell everybody to get back to their cars, and this, this bitch just starts fucking going crazy, like, yo, and, ah, ah, and she stunk. It was just like weird weird thing it wasn't like a regular like person mm -hmm. they get back in their cars my mom gets back in hers and um my water bottle fell out i had football later that day so i was like oh i don't want to give forget my fucking water bottle we over here dying at football practice so i pick it up yeah she comes out the car with uh with some over her head and i didn't know what the fuck it was at the time you know mm -hmm. uh, i mean at that time i already got into a bunch of street fights and I, you know, I was still so young that I still wouldn't be expecting shit like that. You know, I was only 13 yeah. at the time, 13, 14. You know, you're not really expecting anybody to pull out a fucking two, you know, 24 inch machete, bro. Shit, even as like, even as like a, I'm 23. I don't even think like if I got into a fight with somebody, like I would expect them to bring out a fucking uh, man, machete. After that, I, that's all I expect now, you know? Holy but, um, shit. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, she gets out, and I'm thinking it's either a fucking belt or like a bat, but mm -hmm. it was bent back. So I'm like, it might be a fucking belt. I'm like, the fuck is she? She's not. What is she, what is she trying to do, bro? Yeah. She starts smashing my mom's side of the car, bro. Like it, it's breaking the metal, the glass, and I start getting worried, bro. I'm like, oh, that's that might be a bat. Mm -hmm. I start trying to break. I start punching her window to get her attention to come over to me, and. Um, Sure enough, I got her attention, and she's over here fucking walking walking towards me. I'm going to fucking kill you, blah, blah, blah. This whole time, I still think it's like a bat. I knew it was something. I, I You know, you're this, when shit like that is happening, it's going by so fast, nobody's expecting you to have a fucking 24-inch machete. Yeah. And it was a lady, and, you know, I was 
good shape at the time, and I mean that has nothing to do with it. But <laughs> I was, I, I just long story short, I didn't want to fucking hit a hit a female. That's yeah, understandable. Right? That's just uh, you know, I have a mother, a sister. I would never think about hitting a female. The worst thing I think you can do, in my opinion. And I just try to grab her and throw her throw her down, you know, without really like hurting her. And I, you know, she was, it was like a. Uh, few seconds right but she was hacking at me for a little on my form holy shit i still thought it was a belt and i pushed it to the floor i like i felt something caught in my head so i smack it out and the thing like smacks out right away and i see blood like squirting everywhere bro like pumping out yeah i'm like no i got worried because i was like i i, th I thought i didn't hit her you know mm -hmm. i'm over here thinking that she's the one who's bleeding um yeah then after that i'm looking at the floor and I remember, like, passing out, and my body was, like, shaking and shit. And I keep waking up, and uh, here and there, I'm, like, going in and out. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? And, you know, every, there's just so much shit going on the, at the time. It was just, like, a fucking crazy. It was, it was nuts. Yeah. I, uh, I see my mom, you know, going crazy, and she get, the, the lady who stabbed me gets up and, and uh, gets in her car and leaves. And, you know, it's... You know, hearing it back, you know, my mom told me everything that happened in between, but, you know, you don't know where the fuck you're at. I mean, I ended up having a, a severed artery and, uh, you know, I got through uh, the first three layers of my skull. And I think there's only five. So two more layers and I would have been dead, you know. But Holy uh, shit. Oh, my yeah. God. And I'm waking up and I'm looking around and, bro, it's like so many fucking people and nobody's helping. Everybody's just on the sidewalk taking pictures and taking videos and shit. For a 13-year-old kid, you know, I was like, wow, this is like crazy. And, and, uh, and I hear people screaming, get the fucking machete, get the machete. And I, I guess they were thinking my mom was going to pick it up or do something more. Like, they don't yeah. know who did it or whatever. But everybody's just sitting here like fucking taking pictures, taking videos. And, um, you know, eventually I... I you know, I when I when I uh, covered my head or whatever and was able to stop the bleeding, I guess I got some of my consciousness back. Mm -hmm. And my mom was freaking out, so I was trying to calm her down. You know, I to be honest, I felt fine at the time. Wow. It was like, you know, after all that, everything felt crazy, but I really didn't feel any pain. You know, obviously your body's in shock. Mm -hmm. And I just remember my mom, you know, freaking out, so I was trying to calm her down. I'm like, Mom, we're good. We're still, you know, uh, I took out my, put, put out my phone to take a video to like, I, you know, I'm bugging out at the time. I'm just like doing whatever I could to keep my mom you know, calm. Next thing you know, I see fucking blood everywhere, bro. Like, everywhere. I'm like, oh, shit. And I still really don't know if it was a machete or what the fuck happened. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it took forever for the police to get there. Um, I got to the fucking doctors, and they, they told me, they were like, yo, kid, I don't know how you're alive right now, because that was one of the main arteries in your brain, you know? And they were like, I, you know, you covered it up, and, and uh, I guess you just, just stopped yourself from losing that much blood. I didn't believe it at first. I was, you know, it's too fucking crazy. Yeah. In the beginning, I really didn't think it was like that bad because you just, you know, when at that age, you don't process shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then you know, you go to court and everything. You see the the footage and yeah, it was a shit ton of fucking blood, bro. Holy so, shit. Yeah. I mean, going back to where you know how this boosted me and everything. You yeah. Know, everybody saw that <laughs> shit on the. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm going, no, so not a problem. Spill. That um, uh, that was a lot. A lot yeah. to unpack. I mean, I could only imagine like actually going through it. Yeah. Like, yo, Crazy. holy shit! Yeah. I'm so glad that you're okay. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Oh my god, <laughs> yo. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So that you know, that was on the news and everything, and uh, yeah, that's when people at school started finding out, and uh, you know, then they started you know looking at my music and everything. Not saying that that. You know, it shouldn't have really been from that. But, yeah, mm -hmm. that's when people started taking it a little, not seriously, but they just started paying attention a little more. Yeah. yeah. And um, holy shit. Was that before or after the Tekka song? A little after. So that, that wow. gave it a big boost. Was it after? It was after. Okay. Yeah, it was after. Wow. Yeah. Talk about promo. Oh, my God. Holy <laughs> shit. Yo, that is crazy. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, wow yeah. I, I like i don't even know what to say after that because that's just like oh my god bro yo did, like what happened to the lady did they like did, did she get locked up or anything <laughs> like that like because i mean like that's what i'm on you got stabbed in the head <laughs> i mean amongst a few other things but um, yo how do you <laughs> yeah so it's crazy so uh, i gave her like a fucking thousand dollar bail bro wow yeah. so uh it's all, mind you, the whole thing is on fucking video. The body can, like, 
you know, I play fucking like, you know, I've seen some fucking nasty movies, some blood. It looked like a fucking Evil Dead scene, bro. Like, when, when you're Christ. looking at it, bro, I'm like, it doesn't get any worse than this. You know, I'm not saying I wish hell on anybody, but how the fuck can you? I could go to, I go to CBS and take a fucking Snickers bar and get a higher bail than that, bro. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, that's insane. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, the whole jury decided on her not being uh, found guilty on anything. So she, she got off scot-free? Well, I mean, like, not scot-free, but, like, she, she, they found her innocent? hundred uh, percent. She didn't do no time. On anything, bro. No, nah, that's crazy. crazy. And, and uh, you know. What? Uh, nah, that's fucking wild. It, you know, it, so- it sounds like it's not even fucking true, you know? Yeah. Oh, my um, God. You know, like, how, is, when you see all the footage and everything, it's just like, how, bro? You know, I mean, not saying I wish on anybody, but, I, you know, I know people who've done time for... Uh, for really just defending them fucking selves, bro. Yeah. That's all they did was literally defend themselves, man. Uh, you know, when, you know, I, I don't want to get specific, but, uh, yeah, I've like done like five, six years from, from you know, fighting for their fucking life, bro. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, this this person over here fucking slashes a 13-year-old in the machete and just doesn't get anything. Like, it's a little weird to me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's just, you know, the court says it's crazy. There's people who get years, or used to anyway, Over get bullshit, years. Man. Over a dime bag, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, a little tiny bit of weed like this used to get you years in prison. Yeah. And, but getting sl- oh, slashing someone well, doesn't. Well, she does it again, you know? It's just like, uh, it makes no sense. It's crazy. <sighs> Sheesh. Wow. Um, I'm. Glad you're yeah, here, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely glad you're here. You know, you, um, holy shit! Mm-hmm. Wow, where do you even go from that? <laughs> I know, right? It's nuts, man. Um, I mean, yeah. Long story short, that did give us a push in, in uh, the right direction with music. So, wow. Yeah. God damn. Um, I I don't know. I feel like one of the lessons here. Um, expect somebody to take out a machete at some point <laughs> because like you know, <laughs> i'm definitely gonna be on the lookout for that from now on shit. Crazy? um but also uh before anything like that happens um check out your friend's music you know <laughs> because like yeah right? <laughs> that, yeah, at, needing some crazy shit like that yeah. like yo People, people gotta have more genuine intentions. Like, yo, that's ah, nuts, bro. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at least like regard that is such a fucked up situation. And it could have been even worse, bro. I mean, Absolutely. You know, you know, expect people to take out a fucking gun. Just be prepared, man. Yeah, for real. At least you got them. Um, uh, I, at, at the very least, like you got a little push from it. But yeah. I, even then, that's just like a oh, yeah, <laughs> small yeah. upside. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Um. Wow. Okay. Let's uh, let's lighten things up. Let's play another game. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, all right. So this one's called finish the sentence, mm-hmm. and you, well, I say part of a sentence, and then you finish it. Yeah. So okay. My friends would say that I am. Uh. I don't know what to say without feeling cocky. Uh, <laughs> I'll just say a hard worker. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. But. This chapter of my life is called. Uh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Felt that absolutely. <laughs> the most underrated song on my playlist is. Mm. Like Me by Siggy Black. Mm. Shout out Siggy Black. Yeah, right? yeah that's my guy, man. <laughs> Okay, if uh, if you want to impress me, mm-hmm. so like if somebody wants to impress Icy Slug, uh-huh. uh, just show loyalty and and uh, and uh, your drive, mm. really, yeah, your work ethic. That really, I mean, even when I'm on the field with people or doing conditioning or whatever, you know, that's 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 why I get to see, you know, where you really are, is how much how much you're willing to put in. Yeah, yeah, damn, that's good. Um, my favorite song I wrote is "Damn." I feel like, uh, a, other than "Have Fun," because uh, no, I mean it's probably <laughs> uh, it's a different question. I would say. Oh yeah, uh, that is true. Damn. Probably, <laughs> this, I would say I would say the song that we uh, did the short film for with Jamie. It's unreleased, but okay. Yeah, I mean okay. it's called it's called "Here with You." So okay. When that comes out, you guys will know. Yeah. All right, but definitely looking forward yeah, to right. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, my biggest turnoff is or pet peeve, either or. Mm. Like, oh, there's so many different biggest turnoff for a person, a girl, or anything, any of them, anything that fits the criteria. 
It, it can be multiple. <laughs> nah, if a female is too friendly with somebody, man, I don't, mm. don't trust that, bro. Sheesh. Yeah, you don't want to deal with that. Mm-mm. That is not fun. <laughs> 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 All right. Last one. Uh, I can't do business with you if. Oh, man, I got some fucked up shit in my head. I'm not going to say it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nah, uh, I can't do business with you if you have. Is this supposed to be rapid fire, bro? Is it... No, no, uh, no, no. This is this is not yeah, as rapid fire. About... Nah, don't worry. <laughs> you, have, uh... you can say bad reputation. I feel that's like so general, though. Uh, I mean, not I not a bad answer that right now. I'm not. I can say much other so I'm not gonna say. Okay, so we'll just go with that. If you got a bad reputation, mm-hmm. stay away from the slug. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't come near him. <laughs> All right, but uh, so what? Um, uh, what do you you have anything upcoming outside of the uh, the short film slash song that you want people to be on the yeah, lookout for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I shot another video with Jamie. It still needs some some editing and stuff, but oh, it's video for Chico. So yeah, visuals for that. Okay. Um, I have a bunch of plans for this summer, but uh, yeah, I got a few big unreleased songs. Um, yeah, there's one song I think is gonna be a hit when it gets up there. But uh, shit, I don't even have names for these songs yet. But here with you is ma- probably the main thing to look out for. Yeah. Okay. It's creative. It's different. You know, I feel like especially at this uh, at this uh, stage in the artist's career, it's not. You know, I feel like most people don't really put out content like that. You know, especially mm-hmm. being independent. The, you know, Destroy Lonely did something like that recently for his album. I don't know if you saw a short film. Yeah, I saw, I saw bits and pieces of crazy. it. That shit was crazy. That yeah. shit was crazy. Honestly, so. uh, I don't know. I might get some hate for this, but I I tried. I wasn't I wasn't feeling the Destroy, Destroy Lonely album. It takes time, man, because, uh, oh, man, if uh, I think uh, one of my guys, Diego, put me on him so long ago, my cousin, too, and they're always, bro, Destroy Lonely this. And I love Cardi, but I was like, I... I kind of like sounds like kind of like some similar to that you know mm-hmm. and when you when you really sit down and listen to it and i feel like destroy is like putting on like a whole new wave of of uh music mm-hmm. like he's the perfect hybrid between like a rock and rap okay you know and but it, it takes time you know listen to him because i i fucking i love him you know mm-hmm. and i feel like uh you know if you're a fan it's not really pop music but if you have a you know like uh a thing for like that, like rock kind of music, that yeah, it'll eventually get to you, know what I mean? But yeah. I thought his short film was awesome, man. So, something like that, yeah. Okay, hmm. I definitely got to check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I see Slug, thank you so much for stopping oh, thank by. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course, tell uh, why don't you tell the people where they can find you? Uh, shit, anywhere Apple Music, Instagram, I see Slug, uh, yeah, all platforms, YouTube, more content coming soon, man. Yeah. All right. You can also find me on the field at LIU this year. Oh, yeah. no, nah, tell him again. Tell him again. Say what you chose, bro. Yeah, Come yeah. No, nah, you can see me at LIU this year on the football field. Um, hopefully, I get another fight in December. I should. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. December, November. Right when football season is done, I'm going straight into camp. So you can see me in the octagon, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Octagon or ring, you know, whatever martial art it is. Shit. Let me yeah. <laughs> no, nah, keep on the lookout. Keep um, on the lookout for Icy Slug. Big things coming soon. Man, thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Thank of you guys course. for having me, bro. Of course. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in to Talk of the Town. I'm Enrique, and we'll see you next time.